Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox here. And in this uh, unit, we're describing the features that we use to classify the 51 big data use cases that are discussed in a separate section. These uh, use cases are described there in terms of their algorithms and more importantly, what they actually do. And some rather cryptic uh, classification is given. Uh, these uh, slides here flesh out that uh, classification and give a um, somewhat variable amount of detail depending on uh, the classification. This work is based on uh, that done by NIST, National Institute of Standard and Technology, who have a big data public working group which worked from June to September 2013. The leaders of that activity were Wo Chang of NIST, Robert Marcus of ET Strategies, and Chaitan Baru of UC San Diego. And of course, we remember as always in this class, which is also known not only as big data, but also as X informatics, that the motto is to use clouds, running data analytics collaboratively. Processing big data to solve problems in X informatics. And here are all the various X informatics that we have dug out over the last uh, few months. Um, in this lesson, we actually summarize that classification and then we go in to give a little bit more detail of some of those uh, classification areas. This was all done as part of the work of the requirements and use case subgroup of the overall big data public working group. So one of the things that we classify in those 51 cases is uh, what's big, which is essentially what is the parallelism over. Big data runs on big clouds which have lots of nodes and cores and processes and threads running simultaneously. That's parallel computing. The way you do parallel computing is to find some big number, which measures the size of something, and chop the things which is big up into parts, and run one part on each uh, thread or process. The so-called single program multiple data model. So <laughs> if we look at those uh, use cases, uh, we found that the parallelism is sometimes over people. Sometimes that's the users of an application, such as the users of a search engine. Or it's the subjects of the application, like, I don't know, collecting um, census data, and sometimes both. Um, there are a special class of users of application, like uh, researchers or doctors. Uh, like in the case of doctors, uh, there are another set of users called patients. The doctors are the people who use uh, decision tools to make decisions. And then they, in order to make a decision about one patient, they look at a lot of other patients using parallelism over those other patients to uh, speed up the analysis. <coughs> a critical thing which there's um, parallelism over is items. Um, like many of the applications involve images, you have parallelism over images. Uh, electronic medical records, uh, which actually tend to be um, uh, actually related to people. Gene sequences, uh, material properties, manufactured object specifications. These are custom data sets running over a particular field. And another example we find is parallelism over things that are being modeled like vehicles and people. Another area where parallelism is seen is over sense is over the members of the Internet of Things, where they're meant to be by 2020. Various estimates, but um, at least over 50 billion uh, things uh, sitting there. So that's a pretty large number. Um, another important concept, which has different meanings in different uh, contexts, is events. Um, if you have a telescope recording um, uh, the cosmos, and then you might look for anom anomalous uh, 
events like exploding supernovas represented as changes from in an image from night to night. Another set of things are like uh, fraudulent credit card use or turbulence in the atmosphere. So these are um, the uh, detected outlier, unexpected, or um, spe or specially recorded uh, happenings. And of course, there can be lots of those. Um, many people uh, think graph graphs are uh, going to grow in importance because if you set up a chain of um, consequent a chain of uh, connections, say between doctors and hospitals and drug companies and drugs and diseases and patients, that will end up as a complicated graph with complicated interconnections with meaning to the interconnections. And <clears throat> processing such a graph is highly non-trivial. There are other types of networks, or actually also graphs in fact, which are rather simple. If you take a learning network, as we'll cover, we covered in one of the use cases, those learning networks have a huge size, billions of uh, uh, nodes, and those, however, have a simple structure. They're not a generally regular structure with the doctor, disease, patient, hospital um, graph had. Another set of things you get parallelism over is the tweets and the blogs and the documents and the web pages, which you do, which you see when you do information retrieval. And you would also get parallelism over the characters and words in those um, entities. Um, a lot of those um, applications are set up in the so called bag of words model, where the words essentially re represent the dimensions of vectors representing um, the, the document. Another simple thing you have parallelism of is just the uh, resources, like the files or the data itself. When you want to do parallel backup or process the data in some sense in parallel. And several of the applications involve large scale simulation. When you do large scale simulation and do parallel computing there, you'll find parallelism over particles, parallelism over over cells carved out in the uh, domain you're working in, or parallelism over mesh points. So those are the things you get parallelism of. All of these are things which are large, and it's the bigness of the number of these things, which means you get big data.